Terrapin as a whole is meant to be a military exploration vessel. Uh, that's, that's its primary role, is to be sent off into the deep, dark, uncharted space uh, and just find out what's going on and report back home. And so it's designed to be a ship that can take a beating because you don't know, you know what kind of hazards you're going to encounter. You don't know if you're going to start smashing into asteroids because there's an unknown asteroid belt within this nebula. There's, there's a lot of things that this ship would encounter first that it needs to be prepared for. The Terrapin, it borrows a lot from its name. It's essentially like a turtle. Uh, one of the things that's unique about it is it has a sort of locked, a hunkered down mode where it will extend out its, its armor plating and sacrifice some of its mobility uh, to just amp up the survivability. It, a turtle going into its shell. Especially if, you're, if you find yourself in an unknown situation, you've just shown up on a, on a planet and you're being attacked by who knows what. It can really matter to be able to just have that extra time to step back and think about things while your armor takes all the beating and gives you a moment to react. So it comes packed with insane amounts of armor, basically. It can take a crazy beating. It does not have much firepower, though. Um, it can do a little bit of damage to try and defend itself, but that's not its primary role. It's not a combat vessel. It's a vessel whose job is to go in, get the information, and sort of get out from a military perspective, and specifically to do it for uncharted parts of space. Um, and as a result of that, to emphasize how armored it is, it's got a sort of two-stage mode to it, where its basic armor set is very powerful, but in addition to that, you can sort of like hunker down and turtle up. Uh, and what that'll do is it'll bring uh, armor plates that cover the canopy. It'll sort of deploy those to protect the pilot even more than he already is. Uh, and on the flip side of that, it's able to obviously retract the armor and it's able to open up some of its armor plates to vent out heat. Because one of the things that it wants to try and do is reduce its heat signature a little bit if it's trying to stay a little bit stealthy while it's doing some reconnaissance um, and then be able to open up to vent heat. So the Terrapin, as part of being an exploration ship, focuses on having uh, utility mounts to do uh, various kinds of scanning and deeper material scanning. And uh, when you get to these faraway places that you're busy surviving, you'll be able to come away with extra information about them. And uh, that'll key into mining careers and into uh, jump point charting. You'll be doing all kinds of, of scanning, and so you'll be able to use that um, to get really detailed information about whatever planet or derelict or who knows what else that you find out there and feels worth taking a look at. Uh, the Terrapin will let you get, will let you survive getting in close enough, and and you can get a really close look at it. One of the things that we did really early on was we worked with tech design very very closely to make sure that everything was sort of to spec. Now, through our production, things had to change, but once we finished the art on the, the Terrapin, or any ship for that matter, first goes to the tech design team. And what they do is make sure that from a gameplay standpoint, the ship uh, ticks all the boxes, basically, right? It, it, it fulfills its requirements for gameplay. Um, and from there, it'll get sent out to the animation team and the special effects team and the sound team, and everybody starts to you know, work on this beast until it comes to life. Because it is a deep space exploration vessel, it comes with uh, standard, uh, sort of a gigantic sensor dish on the back. Now the Terrapin is also an anvil ship, and the sensor dish does two things for us. One, from a gameplay standpoint, uh, if you're attacking the Terrapin, that's a target you want to shoot sh to knock down their sensors. Uh, but two, it brings in that sort of circle motif inside of an anvil ship, bringing the families together. Uh, because the, the Terrapin looks very different than other anvil fighters, because it isn't a fighter, but we're still bringing in those same, you know, the same shape language, the same colors, the same lighting, uh, to keep the family you know, identifiable. So as we were starting to think about like, what we were gonna make anvil interiors look like, 
a lot of influences came our way. We were looking a lot at um, Star Wars and Alien, and one of the things that jumped out immediately was the um, hexagon patterns. So a lot of anvil interiors and exteriors have a lot of 30 degree angles that meet to form sort of hexagons that overlap each other, which gives it this kind of like, it's very strong structural look, I'd say. It's got these quaint little living quarters uh, that you'll be, you'll have your little bed, you'll have your, your you know, you'll have food, the water. There's it, it has um, it has storage space for repair items and med kits, and uh, it has a, a a place for your suit, your flight suit, your uh, equipment, uh, whatever little knickknacks you find of particular interest you'll be able to, to bring. It's not a cargo ship, but it does have a, uh, some personal storage that'll let you bring back mementos, or um, if you find something of, uh, of, of particular curiosity, you can bring that back for any research or uh, other kinds of gameplay that um, we'll be exploring in the future with other ships as well. It has two stations, um, but for the longevity that it offers, it, it's really a one person. Uh, you can bring others and work as a, as a group, but that'll start cutting into your, your time out in the field. It's not really a ship that, that you're going to want to uh, sort of have a party in. Uh, you're not going to bring a ton of friends along. You might bring one so that they can do some of the scanning while you fly around and navigate asteroid fields and make sure that you're not crashing into anything. But it is kind of a loner ship because its primary role isn't, isn't within combat. So even within a fleet, if you're working in, you know, in concert with an entire fleet, you're still kind of doing your thing off on your own. We've had to revisit the concept a little bit, uh, not least of all because the original concept didn't really fit metrics. So it's grown in size a little bit. Uh, we've tried to keep that down as much as possible and still have like a reasonable uh, walking space. We tried to stay as true to the original concept as, as we could. Uh, but things like uh, the implementation uh, requirements of landing gear, for instance, which we had only vague notions of when the Terrapin went into concept, uh, requires uh, a lot more clearance underneath the ship uh, than the original concept gave, uh, the, than the original concept afforded it. The other ships that transform for their landing mode wouldn't be able to land without doing so. Um, Whereas this armor deployed doesn't change whether or not the landing gear is available, uh, but it does change characteristics of flight. It does change characteristics of how it handles incoming damage and, and how it reports the, the state of the ship with uh, the interior art, the lighting, the, any, any indication on your MFDs. It, the, the armor does reduce visibility. You'll still, have, you'll still be able to see outside uh, but normally you have this huge open canopy to look out and the armor deploys over some of that, that cockpit window. The thrusters on the, the Terrapin uh, are able to um, articulate uh, and so the mains double as the VTOL thrusters, which means that uh, they'll be able to uh, handle hovering for basically any duration of time. Um, we have, uh, as we move forward with our flight concepts and our IFCS implementation, we have heat uh, engaging more and more with the simulation there. And the need for specialist thrusters to handle sustained thrust, uh, especially on these heavier ships, which really all of our ships are are quite heavy. They're quite. They're a lot larger than than they might seem at first blush when you have this grand scope of planets, but when you get down to it, this thing is quite massive. It's quite heavy. It takes it takes a lot of force to keep it in the air. It's a. It's all. It's not a dynamic ship. Uh, it's not an aerodynamic ship by any stretch. It's a. It's a flying brick. 
And so it uses its, its main thrusters as VTOLs to keep it in the air and uh, keep it uh, equally maneuverable, kind of regardless of the situation. It's never super agile, but it doesn't either have a really a point of disadvantage for, for its flight. It could just use its mains. The focus is on its, on its survivability, on its ability to take damage. And so keeping everything encapsulated uh, is not wings to shoot off. There's not uh, any, anything out and vulnerable. It's able to sort of package itself up uh, and hunker down for the long haul. And in doing so, it just needs to make sure that it has its thrusters in a position where they can keep it aloft for as long as you need to. And so they'll be able to do that. This, this one has been a challenge as well because uh, this is our first anvil with an interior walking space. Figuring out how to extend that art style of the canopy and the cockpit to also be bulkhead and the room layout and what does an anvil door look like? This is the first one. So we had to spend some time thinking about that spend some time thinking about how an anvil ship reports the ship status when you're not in the cockpit. Uh, how the lighting, uh, a lot of these, these things come together to communicate to the player uh, their current condition and what, what gameplay options they have available to them, uh, what concerns they have pressing. Anvil has physical displays. And so one of the things about, like, the distinction between Anvil and, and Drake is that uh, when Drake has a control panel, it's a, a button that you're just going to pound into the wall and expect it to not break in doing an open whatever. Uh, where Anvil uh, it will have a display, it'll have, you know, these, these touch screens, but not something that would be nearly as fancy as what RSI would do. They might start to incorporate holographic displays and things like that. So it's, it's a middle ground between the pure function of Drake and the aesthetic form of uh, MISC and RSI. One of the cool things about Anvil is that it is like a military manufacturer, so it's very utilitarian, very cold, kind of lifeless, very utilitarian. Everything in the ship kind of has a purpose or should look like it has a purpose. As an exploration ship, it's one of the smallest that gives you the ability to go anywhere. It, it, it might be the kind of thing where you, you go explore and once you know where that thing is, maybe you come back with backup or maybe you go out and you find cool new locations for for outposts. The Terrapin is the ship for would-be explorers to set out on their own, see what the universe is like, and have a decent uh, assurance that they'll, that they'll survive it. <laughs>